Cutting aluminum is easy. It's just really noisy. Okay, I'm just going to file the edges and make them nice and clean, or smooth rather, so they don't cut me. Okay. Now this is what I'm looking for. It's this edge right here. It fits perfectly with my cutter. That's my straight cutter. That is sweet. Awesome. We're good. Okay. Alright. Now, this isn't the prettiest thing on the planet, um, but it's 100% effective. It works really well. Before you build this, make sure you have the cutters, you own them. Um, you'll notice in my pictures, I changed, you'll see that in my photos. I changed it out for the simple reason that my straight cutter doesn't fit in there. It won't drop right down. So I had to change it out. I made this guy. This is the one you see me making in the video. And I wish I had used this back one for my straight edge, but it's too late. But I absolutely love how the, the cutters work into it. So really impressed with the uh, the material and this 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 material, all it is is just old uh, closet door hanging tracks out of aluminum. Don't try to use steel; it won't work. Aluminum is easy to work with. You saw me cut one. My bevel cutter. It. I suppose you can get the um, the guides on it. Or get. I don't know if it's an aftermarket you can put onto it. I'll see if I can find that. If not, I can still work without it. Not a big deal. But I had to change it be simply because of my straight cutter. It has that and doesn't cut properly without it. Uh, you have to have 90 degree angle. You, you've got to nail this one. This is the one that is, that is critical. The rest just falls in place. doesn't matter. This is movable. Um, always use an undercut mat when you're, when you're cutting your mats. I'll show a photo uh, as to why you want to do that because it's simply the, the blade will just blow out the bottom and it'll be unsightly. You'll ruin your mat. You won't like it. Um, I do use a quickie. This is set for two inches. I use a quick drop in. It's a piece of wood, which is a half inch. So I can go two inch, drop this in down to an inch and a half without moving my back gaze. I move it as little as possible to stay accurate. Uh, my hinges, these guys are just uh, the hasp and lock sets that you get for putting on your shed. They work really, really well. Now, you find it a little sloppy, so all I did was four or five times just get, put a pair of ice cubes on it and just keep squashing it down as much as possible. Get it close. Once you've done that, it will no longer have a sideways uh, action. They work great. The price is right. Five bucks, uh, you know, it's awesome. Really happy with that. Okay, um, this piece of wood was simply an open shelf that uh, 
we had downstairs that I, I tore the closet apart, so I put a closet shelf. Uh, you can probably get something like this at uh, uh, Home Hardware or Lowe's. This, this particular piece of wood is actually 20 years old. Uh, just scraps of aluminum, odds and ends that I've used. Uh, you can make this, this uh, 90 degree angle uh, material out of almost anything, as long as you have a nice straight edge to go up to. I did countersink it for the simple reason I want it firm, I don't want it moving around. Because if that changes, it changes your cut here, and it's, it's no good. You won't be happy. Let's let's cut to, let's cut a map. Okay, let's move you guys out of the way. This is set up at two inches, so I don't want my two inch this way. So I'm just going to put my pencil mark on. Here's my two inch. The other end. My two inch. Dropping my spacer here. I'm going this size because that's what works with the paper I have. Just inch and a half. Put you over. Inch and a half. And this down nice and tight. I'll do my inch and a half cuts first since I have the wood in. I want like this guy. Set your bevel cutter. Use this in your lines. Now, it doesn't have this. It's called no creep button on it, like you'll see with the Logan. Uh, this is a Logan cutter, but it doesn't have that no creep button. Really hold down good and firm before you, when you drop your blade. Drop your blade. Slide her along. I use two hands because it. If you go past, you've ruined your material. You're not happy. Okay. Flip her over. Do my other inch and a half. Come down to my 90 degrees. Make it holds it in place. Keeps everything square. Keeps me happy. Hold down firmly. Drop your blade in. Slide. Make sure your blade is nice and sharp. Don't overwork it. Probably be cheaper to buy blades than it would be to for my two inch now. Oh, see I went too far. Oh well. Patience. I could design a stopper. You can do that. My blade's dull and having trouble sliding it. No, that should have dropped right out. Oh, there it is. A little bit over there. Okay, let's cut a mat. Here's my half inch mark. One and a half, sorry. One and a half inch mark. I dropped this guy in just to keep down to one and a half. This is set at two inches. This will be my two inch mark. Two inch. I'll cut my two inch guys first. Hold down firmly when you drop your blade in. Another two inch. Now, back to one and a half. 
just saves me moving this guy. <coughs> my blade cutting too deep. Sweet! Nice, huh? I like it. I don't know what I'll do with this. Maybe I can make a tiny, tiny one. <laughs> anyway, I'm really happy with this unit. I love it. Um, if I think of something else to say, I'll come back. When you're out uh, hunting, shopping, whatever you're going to do to find uh, your material for your guides, um, whether it be if you go to in America, it's uh, the bro Broken Pool, I think it's called. Uh, secondhand stores may have aluminum. Uh, I, I'd say you see, don't buy this product when it's, people are throwing them out and, and they work really well. <coughs> I would, if I were you, if you don't have these cutters, go and buy them before you build this. Uh, these these little guys that are on, especially on this uh, straight cutter, will help you when you go out to purchase or find your materials that you're going to use. And you can always test it to see if your guide's going to work with that material that you should find or, or go and buy. It, it's going to help you uh, time instead of trying to modify something. You work with this, or you have to offset cuts, and it's just really annoying. Take take it with you when you're on your hunt. Um, when you start to set your board up, when you, as you're making it, this groove here is to allow the knife to go right on through without digging into this, which will ruin your blade in no time. Um, what, how you locate this, it, it pretty much depends on the size of hinge you get the size of aluminum piece that you have, so don't cut this hole until you have this made. Uh, pretty much you can assemble it, put it on, and I, what I did was the, this, this cutout is my guy the center on that cutout. So that's, that's important. Okay, there is another uh, jig I'm going to make. Um, I haven't made a video yet on it, but I've, I've sort of tinkered with the concept. Uh, it's this is actually it's called it's a, a drywall square. I'm going to make a small jig that will incorporate this guy. It'll give you your, your 90 degree edge, um, so you can use it. It won't be as elaborate as this guy. It'll be quite simple. You won't this won't be hinged. You won't be able to move it. You'll have to end up sliding your work in and out. But you know, it's not a big deal. It, it, you could use it mainly just for straight cuts if you wanted to, but it'd be another uh, super cheap route to go. This this would be about twenty dollars, and and the wood and a couple of screws would be all you really need to make it work. Anyway, that's another video I'm going to make. We shall see. Talk to you later.